Well, I was this weekend and acquired me some brand new parts. A uh, brand new T7 cylinder head and intake manifolds and a throttle body for my project. As I now want to scale it down and I don't gonna use dry sump and so on. And I don't, I will not need that larger head for now that I made before. And because it will not be able to run in the lower RPM range that I need now for this humongous turbo. And um, Saab were quite the geniuses when designing these T7 cylinder head and intake manifolds. They are perfectly tuned together, like uh, completely over engineered, basically. But Saab were in for maximum efficiency, mostly. And there's so many that has misunderstood the design of the intake manifold and how much it actually affects the intake port. They basically designed the intake port even starts here with the design, out here. And there's so many that ports the intake ports completely wrong and yet use original intake manifold, which will make the cylinder head dead within 3000 to 4500 RPM or even 5000, dependent on how large you make the port. Because there's no purpose to widen the port. There are some specific other things you can do. Let's talk about the general design of the intake manifold and why it's designed this way. So we have air coming in straight into the middle and it creates this tumbling effect and a high pressure zone there and there. We have an angle of the runners going in towards the, the, the uh, back end of uh, the high pressure zone here and here so it, it basically makes the um, tumbling of the air push evenly towards both outer and inner runner by default from the design and if we look at the from the, the intake manifold from the side we can see that it's quite large actually, in tapering down quite a bit towards the intake port. And this increased the velocity quite a bit. And it might not look that large up here, but from this angle, but they went up in the height of the runner instead, which makes it even larger than when it is up here. And if we look specifically here at the floor of the intake manifold, we have like this ramp here, like a small deflection zone on the inside. And what this does is to push the air up in towards the injector and the long turn radius of the intake port. And this improved the velocity and fuel atomization a lot. As well as this uh, like little channel here for the injector as well. Make a high pressure zone uh, airstream at the injector tip, which helps boost the fuel atomization even further. Uh, and where I'm going, I, I won't need that specific, specifically when I will port it later and show you guys. And um, if we look quite specifically at the corner of every other, the inside corner of each runner, 
along with the bend. So it comes bending here. We have chamfer, 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 and chamfer. This is because we have high pressure and low pressure zones, and high velocity and low velocity zones. And airflow always wants to take, like when pushed, always want to take the outer area, outer long-term radius. So we have all this mass flow going in the outer radius and we have lower velocity on the inside. So what Saab did that was really genius here is that they actually used this to their advantage and tuned the cylinder head and intake port to gain optimum velocity as much as they could without sacrificing the mass flow and this is why we have this chamfer on every other inside or on every inside corner of these runners and it follows in the head as well if you look here there we have it as well and what this does is they tune the head to behave almost like a variable length intake manifold uh, to have an extremely wide power band and the function of the head should be very efficient over a very broad RPM range and this is something that a lot of people do wrong with these heads when they port them. Removing this. Removing this and using a stock intake manifold. They are meant to work together as a team. They do not function without each other particularly well from the design. And now when uh, I will it for my build since I have scaled down my build a bit uh, I will not run dry sump oil pump anymore or not now at least so that's why I went down with a smaller port style and so on to improve uh, the RPM range instead instead as with an oil sump dry pump I can run a lot higher RPM and that wouldn't be a problem uh, but then also economical costs involved as well. Um, so basically what, what I will do, like here is my turbo, here's my large turbo, it's a G42, uh, 1450, so 4, 1400 horsepower turbo. Uh, I will go down into a smaller uh, turbine housing size uh, to the twin skull uh, 1.01 AR size it should spool very quickly along with this tubular manifold twin skull tubular manifold with dual 50 mm 50, 50 millimeters <laughs> can't even talk and um, what I will do here is I will port, I win, will not widen the ports because I, I don't want to destroy what Saab made, the, the way Saab made this because it's so damn good and it's very noticeable when removing and doing the porting wrong. One should never ever touch the short turn radius of a Saab cylinder head. Never ever. And so I will increase this and remove these five millimeters here and also increase the port intake port height to give it a more of a shallow approach to the long term radius have the velocity build over time the closer to the valve it comes 
and um, also by keeping the same as it was before I will also keep a lot of um, velocity still even though it's the port is larger I won't hurt the port as much and it will also since I also increase the height of the port the port roof it will also carry the efficiency higher up in the RPM as well at the moment it's quite kind of sharp kind of sharp angle to be honest and this should make me be able to have a very very good peak power at like 7300 rpm or something with that large turbo and yet to be able to spool it very well as I don't overdo the port size I will keep the same original width of the port size and it actually looks quite promising as well when I look in CFD that I use as well so it should be a winning concept here <clears throat> it's basically like taking like this much almost becomes a perfect square not really but almost uh, more like a very large rectangle and it should be very very interesting nonetheless and then I also get the option to shape the valve guide and uh, that area a little bit more to help me actually gain the velocity and push the velocity with the valve guide as well by shaping it and then we also have the T7 valves already that's very good as they are. Here for example, here we have one. If we look closely, uh, it actually has a back cut that's quite large. So it flows a lot of air mass even at low lifts, unlike T5 valves and such. So this is the general like ID of this this is why also T7 heads flow so damn much at low lifts because the valve design is so much better also yeah I don't really know what to explain anymore than that kinda sums up it quite well nonetheless I will I will uh, probably make a video while I port the cylinder head and port the intake manifold as well. I will probably ramble this up again partially. And this is basically meant to be a, I'm thinking like a build, small build series when I build the engine. As I have the piston, pistons and rods here. I will also probably video while I machine the rods a bit. I have a crankshaft down there and so on. And fuel system, fuel tank and my my own cutting rings as well. Fire rings I should say. And camshaft of course. I should also add that to this regarding the intake manifold the size of, size of the intake manifold chamber is quite narrow so that's a limiting factor but what we can do here uh, from testing both I have done and a friend in Germany uh, when enlarging the short pipe we slow down the air mass before it reached the throttle body and therefore we give it a better option of uh, moving more freely inside the intake manifold. What we noticed was with the smaller pipes 
we have back pressure in the intake manifold. So internally, it's building pressure on itself because the, high, the velocity, is, velocity is too high. And when we went up in pipe size, we reduced the uh, reading map pressure with over 0.2 bars inside the chamber and um, we still made the same amount of air mass but now we know at least that it, it gets the air mass efficiently and there's no extra restrictions on the compressor and so on so it should be able to deliver more efficiently even higher up in rpm as well and uh, since we don't have back pressure in the internal in intake manifold it also improves the response a lot even though it makes the same air mass but we drop the pressure and have a better response and i will probably run a three inch pipe as this is about a 2.75 inch fitting here and then i will come with three inch pipe to a three inch in and out intercooler and the turbo also has three inch outlet as well which will be perfect really that's it's quite a lot of turbo for this tiny boy but it will work nonetheless which will probably probably make a lot of power on very little boost due to the way i will design it um, but it should be very fun nonetheless and yeah i see you guys next video peace out